Lovely. Just lovely, wasn't it? Anyway, yes, beautiful day here on Wall Street. And we have a lot. I mean, I can't tell you how much stuff we have to cover today in a short period of time. And that's exactly what we're going to do here on this lovely post market wrap up on this Tuesday. What's the date? Yeah, September 14th. 2021 so let's let's start off with these markets it's kind of funny actually it's beyond that stocks finished lower today pretty much across the board nothing major the biggest loser was the Dow uh, the Dow Jones industrial average which didn't even fall one percent but I know some people are all you know upset about this uh, me no not at all uh, anyone who understands the markets realizes they don't go up every single day and once in a while, they can fall from time to time, and that's actually a good thing. But with that aside here, here's the little funny twist, and I think some of you probably already know what I'm talking about. So this morning, stocks were off to the races, higher across the board, and you had the cheerleaders on the mainstream channels. Oh, stocks are in rally mode because inflation, you know, the, the report came in better then we expected, oh, absolutely fantastic. And then when stocks go negative, silence. You don't hear a word, nothing. Uh, it, it's astonishing to me. Again, what's wrong with these people? What are they trying to do? Uh, I don't know. Maybe you can let me know. It's, it's pretty crazy. So what else? Let, let's stick to market basics right now. 10-year yield, okay, came down a little bit. Um, generally, that's you know signifies some fear in the market, but I don't think so because the dollar, although it did reverse most of its losses, didn't recover all of them. Generally, when you got a real fear trade, you got that 10-year yield coming down, you got the knee-jerk higher in the dollar. You didn't have that. The dollar still finished negative, okay? Crude oil made a pretty big turnaround. It was higher, reversed, finished slightly lower. Okay, so that's really the setup here. Nothing major at all whatsoever with regard to this market today in my view. And I would be willing to bet that most of you would have to agree. Now, again, understanding how this whole thing works, we do have to put a few other things together. And we got some really just lovely economic news. I mean, on top of on top of this, I mean, this morning, what do we find out? Consumer prices rise. I'm laughing. I'm laughing. 5.3% year over year with food in August alone, 0.4%. And wages are not rising and the consumer is weak. That's pretty bad, but it gets even better. We're going to talk about that in a moment. I want to cover this because a lot of people seem to be like in panic mode over this uh, Chinese uh, property giant, you know, Evergrande here and their potential default. Uh, yeah, I, I understand this. I know what's going on over there, but what does it mean? Uh, is it any surprise that, again, uh, what do we know is going on here? Housing is ridiculous. It's in a hyper bubble, uh, a deliberate act that's been, you know, they reinflated a housing bubble by, re, by uh, suppressing rates from here to eternity. And this is a global phenomenon. So what would you expect here? So what does it mean? Well, a couple of things could happen. They could try to restructure the debt. They could uh, try to sell it. Uh, who knows? Do you, I don't believe, at least, that the Chinese government uh, is not going to act on this. And look, so let's just say, for example, they do default and all of a sudden, uh, you know, housing prices get hit. Could this, could this actually affect us here in the United States? Absolutely. Absolutely. It could. But would you be surprised? Would that shock you in any way, shape or form when we clearly have a housing bubble uh, here in the United States as well? Come on. I mean... I'm not even thinking about it, I'll be honest with you, because I realize, like most of you, I hope, that this whole thing is a shit show to the highest possible order. So, you know, it's whatever. Is there going to be a global real estate crash like the one we witnessed in 2008? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. It's a completely different ballgame today. But 
Is this something we need to be aware of? Absolutely, I think we are aware of this, but what does it mean? I don't know. I don't know what it means. Again, there are, there are things that can be done, like I said, restructuring of debt, selling debt, uh, getting some kind of bailout, uh, which would not surprise me at all. Would it surprise you? I don't think so. Anyway, um, it's so crazy here, people. Let me move on here. I want to talk about some of the lovely, more, on top of what we got this morning, economic news. So we, f we found out today, lovely, and this is no surprise to you, global debt continued to surge to a new all-time record high. Imagine my shock. Now, we also found this out. Kind of interesting, too. U.S. incomes are falling, uh, and the uh, national poverty rate is increasing. Okay. Inflation-adjusted income, inflation, excuse me, adjusted income fell 2.9%. <laughs> Can't make it up. Uh, and that's what they're letting us know about. And the poverty rate uh, is also climbing. It actually went up a full percentage point. And I find that kind of very hard to believe. I'm sure it's way, way, way more than that. But that's the story, people. Um, the bad economic news is not going to stop, uh, and it can't do it. If you realize what's happening really behind the scenes, that is our economy as a percentage of GDP, our debt to GDP ratio is out of control, the economy continues to contract. So as long as that mechanism stays in place, and it will, um, you will get more bad economic news. And in my view, the stock market will go higher. Now, that does not mean that we can't have periods of volatility. Where we are right now with regard to the stock market this this time of the year, yeah, it's volatile. Uh, and we should expect, expect anything. Uh, are we going to really get a correction? Well, all I can say is we can only hope so, really. We need one. The market is ridiculous. Uh, it needs its time. It's time for this market to correct. Will it? I don't know. Uh, we haven't had one in quite a while. With regard to a crash, I don't see anything around me, unless you want to say this uh, Evergrande thing is going to precipitate it. I don't know. I mean, anything is possible. But right now, you have to understand, look, people don't get the bigger picture. And the the bigger picture is simply the global debt market. What did we just find out? Global debt just hit a new record high. That is going to continue, all right? And as long as the beast keeps getting fed and the beast gets fed with more debt, things will remain the way that they are, okay? Once the, the beast doesn't get fed anymore, well, then we get an implosion on a biblical scale. Hey, beast in Bible, hey. I don't know. Maybe I'm touching on something. Anyway, look, um, I, I really believe that you all have a, a very clear understanding as to what's going on. And I'm going to tell you again, focus like a laser beam on the 10-year yield. I say it every day. Every freaking day, I tell you, watch that 10-year yield. Watch it. And where can you see it in real time? Right here on my website. TradersChoice.net, along with the dollar or the Dixie, which is the relative value of the dollar, crude oil, cryptocurrencies are there, everything. Um, you know, did I touch on that too? So cryptocurrencies today did put on uh, a little bit of a gain. Gold and silver actually reversed from being lower to higher. But look, people, you know what, you know what all this is? Uh, it's a shit show, like I said earlier. And the game is risk on. I don't care that the market sold off less than 1%. The Dow fell like 0.8% to the biggest loser of the major indices. So, so what? So what? Does that mean that we should be so scared, terrified? You know, is, that, is that the what we should do? Uh, 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 how about no? How about absolutely not? We need to keep our heads in the right spot. We, we, we got to... Realize what we're doing, why we're doing it, how we're taking advantage of it. That's it. This is not hard to do. Okay? So don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Understand your environment and do what you think is the right thing or things, plural, to keep yourself on the right side of it. This is what people are telling you. you, you if you can, you've got to diversify your portfolio. You've got to be in risk on assets 
and risk off assets. So when it does flip, you're hedged. You're always, I'm hedged big time, okay? And able to take care of myself and, and I'm hoping for all of you, letting you understand how to keep yourself hedged, okay? Being in risk on assets and risk off simultaneously so you don't have to pinpoint when this thing flips around because you're hedged. You understand? I think you do. All right, people, look, kind of a long video. Please share it. Get it out there. Uh, and as usual, I will. I promise to keep you on the right side of this. Just, just stay with me, and, and, and I got you covered. I promise. I will see you in the morning. I'm out of here.